What's going on, Jeff fans? Just saw a report, an article by Ian Rappaport, um, saying that a source tells him Woody Johnson is not going to shake things up. Uh, no major changes at GM, head coach, or offensive coordinator. And this is something we've talked about. We've kind of all assumed they they would get a a Rodgers mulligan, most likely. And some jet beat reporters have been on this, but this is the first time I've seen it from a a national league source. And it's probably just Woody bracing the fans in case the jets bottom out in disgraceful fashion. Um, that if they're calling for heads to roll, you know, just letting us know now that's, that's what these teams do. Uh, they manage expectations and that's probably what we have going on here now. Okay. Uh, that's my thought. My, my thought on it is all right, like whatever. Um, if Joe Douglas, Robert Sala were to lose their jobs, would I feel sorry for them? No, uh, they've been historically uh, inept at doing the number one important thing, and that is winning. They have lost more than anybody not named Kotai in this organization's history, so that is what it is. Now, at the same time, uh, do I get the logic of bringing them back and actually trying to let them see the plan through with the quarterback that they were supposed to have? Yeah, I get that logic too. Um, also, the weird, you know, I don't know if you bring in a new coach, or you're just going to do an interim guy until Rodgers leaves and then restart over there. I get all that. So fine. But uh, first of all, we should all now unapologetically be able to have a mandate that says you got to win a playoff game in 2024 or everybody's gone. No ifs, ands, or buts. No nothing. No coping. No. You win a playoff game or you're done. Right. That's first. But also there will be scapegoats. Right. Michael Floor last year, even though he obviously wasn't the biggest problem. Uh, that's made. It's been made clearly obvious now. Um, but. You have to look at the, the two areas I look at is number one, offensive line coach. The offensive line is the whole offense is obviously horribly coached, but if you can't get rid of Hackett, the offensive line has, has been so, and it's not just the injuries, like they're even worse than the, the talent. They're one of the worst, and the guys of Jet X Factor posted the analytics. They're one of the worst offensive lines in, in league history, and they have so many plays of blown assignments and miscommunication and it's the it's like between Beckton and Tomlinson guys who have been starting so that's got to be the first thing uh I look at and then I mean pretty much anyone under Hackett if they lose their job wide receiver coach Calabrese whatever but the first place I would look is Keith Carter who also the, speaking of injuries Taylor Luan veteran offensive lineman now retired was openly critical of Keith Carter and saying how his practices led to more offensive linemen getting hurt And the Jets have had more offensive linemen get hurt in practice this year than I can ever remember before. So there is no way anyone could tell me that Keith Carter is a net positive on this team. He's got to go. The other area I would look at is the pro scouting department. Now, obviously, Joe Douglas makes the final decisions, but he's going to stay. When the Jets have broken out big money for free agents, it has been reprehensible under Joe Douglas. Abysmal. There's a guy who makes $7 million or more. He's doled out 15 contracts of dudes who make $7 million or more. Only two you can call us uh, like a hit is DJ Reed and Tyler Conklin. A lot of Lakin Tomlinson, Carl Lawson, Corey Davis, uh, I mean, Dalvin Cook, Alan Lazard, Dwayne Browns. It's, you know, even guys who are like, ah, George Fant, eh, Jordan Whitehead, eh. You know, two really two hits, really, in my opinion. So those are the two areas you got to look at. Offensive line coach and pro scouting uh, personnel. Uh, so scary hours for Keith Carter, Rex Hogan, and the like. But uh, the big men will be back, and we'll talk about soon.